When you're feeling suicidal or having a panic attack, instead of waiting until after school or until after work, you can do it in the heat of the moment. You can get us right there. We're meeting people in pain where they're at. We're in their pocket. It's really easy. Young people are text natives. They've always communicated this way. Texting gives the texter and the crisis counselor time to process what each side is saying. It's natural to have a minute or two in between messages. As the texter, they kind of have to get a little bit calm. And as the crisis counselor, you can stop and think, What's the best thing for me to say here? What's the, going to be the most effective question for me to ask? There's something about this anonymity that a lot of the texters, they shared something that they've never shared with someone before. They're talking to a complete stranger. This is what's called virtual volunteering. It's online. You apply online, go through a background check online, do a 34-hour online training at your own pace, and we have a coach who will guide you through it. And then you're a crisis counselor a few hours a week when you want to give those hours from wherever. It's funny because sometimes I'll be talking to someone and I'll see people texting around me. And I'm like, oh, am I talking to you? You? <laughs> um, I don't think it ever crosses a texter's mind that they're talking to someone in a hospital. I've always wanted to be a doctor, but a couple months before graduation, I became sick, fainting three times a day. There was a suspected immune issue going on. I really couldn't go to class, and it became clear that I had to be in the hospital getting treatment for eight hours a day. Some people say, oh, you're lucky you could just sit and watch TV. To me, that's just a horrifying thought as someone with a chronic illness, I like crave a sense of like responsibility, a sense of purpose. And it was about that time when I came across Crisis Text Line. So this texter has reported recent feelings of suicide um, due to bullying. To focus the conversation, I say, what makes you special? What makes you strong? And the biggest idea that I give people is journaling write down three things, like three people that made you happy today. And it forces you to think positively. She is so inspirational to other crisis counselors. She had this whole plan, right? She's supposed to be in medical school right now, and her life got totally interrupted. And instead, she has chosen to use that time to save other people. I don't feel like I saved their life. I just led them to a point where they could do it for themselves. We have now processed more than 50 million messages. So we have aggregated the data and mapped it. And you can see the worst time of day for substance abuse. You can see that the number one state for anxiety is my home state of Connecticut. The number one state for suicidal ideation is Montana. Think about what all of that information does for families, policymakers, this is data science and technology being applied to things that matter. Our goal is to take someone to a healthy place and to remind them how strong they are. Sometimes we can't. In less than 1% of the time, we can't. And then we call 911. When we first built things, we put words like die, suicide, overdose into the algorithm, and the people who use those words are number one in the queue. We take them very, very quickly. And then we added on an algorithm that looks at all of our conversation and all of the words and found words and word combinations and noted what words actually were most likely for us to end up calling 911. So for example, the word military is twice as likely for us to call 911 than the word suicide. The unhappy face crying emoji is four times more likely for us to call 911 than the word suicide. And 
words about pills are 16 times more likely for us to call 911 than the word suicide or the word overdose. The algorithm picked all those things up and we stack rank based on severity. When I became sick, I developed a sense of feeling purposeless. But I realized that you don't need a PhD to save lives. Giving someone self-confidence is a huge gift. These cell phones are lifelines. The pain that we see from people largely comes from isolation and shame. And by being able to connect to us in a private, anonymous way, they feel stronger. I've gone through some pretty dark moments myself. And yes, I have so many of my own problems, but Crisis Text Line has shown me that I have potential. And so long as I have my computer, there is always a place for me to go to help others.